I guess it really did start on my birthday. Oh, hello. Didn't notice you. Now, you might be wondering what I was thinking about. Well, I was thinking about a time where we left the con our city home and travelled to this new country home. I didn't know why at first, but we did make some friends, did some things, some I do regretting now. Like, some nights I was cold and, no, freezing, and I stupidly ran off to nick some coal every night. But we, we did do some good stuff. Like, oh, like when the mountain collapsed onto the railway and the train was coming along, it almost hit it, but we saved it. When we were awarded our medals, I was over the top. It was the best feeling. And then father came home and honestly, things couldn't have got much better for us. I was cleaning out the cupboard under the stairs and found some old child and found some old pictures of my childhood home. We were really ordinary kids back then. We lived in a little red brick villa with coloured glass in the door. Well, we thought we were ordinary, but turns out we were quite well off. However, that was all before everything with father happened. Sometimes I look back and wonder. What would life have been like if, if Father had never been taken away that fateful day? Would we have sat in that red brick villa for the rest of our lives, oblivious to the world around us? And where would we be now? It's true that moving to the country changed our lives, and I've always been grateful for the way that it did. But I cannot help but wonder, what if we did, we did not become the railway children and fall in love with the dragons that came down the railway every morning? The railway was the thing that shaped our whole lives and it will shape our future. There are many things, I don't know, but there is one thing I know for certain. I cannot change the past, but the future is mine to create. remember them days when me and my siblings were the talk of the town. We were the luckiest people ever, but we didn't know that then. When we moved, I was scared, terrified and confused. Mother wouldn't tell me anything. But my favourite part was waving to the old man on the train. We knew he'd be our friend, but we didn't know his name. I wish I could go back to them days when I was able to run around like I used to and adventure new places. I remember the time it was Mr. Pert's birthday and we got him all the gifts from the town. They were the best times of my childhood. I remember how kind the old man was to mother when she was ill. How I miss them days and never will forget them. Looking back, I do regret what I did. I mean, it, on that dreaded night, at the time, I thought I was doing the right thing. We had no food. I felt as if I was going to be mother's hero. We'd been so very cold, shivering all night. I felt as the, I felt as the man of the house. It was my duty to look after the family, sadly. In fact, like Leo was told me, I was being mischievous. My heart sank at the moment when the station master caught me. I remember the words as they echo through my head like a cave of darkness. The night when I stole that coal, oh, I remember it so faintly. The only one thing I remember as clear as day was the shame. The shame I felt after crawling to the middle of the pile of coal. But then remembering, I mean, everything I did back then was regretful. All the stuff I did, it was stupid. I was a young idiot. As he spoke to me, I always just remember the feeling of emptiness. I could 
and they've all got done. Hi, my name is Phileas. I was one of the railway children with Bobby and Peter. This is my story. I, I remember what happened so clearly as a crystal. I remember having a peaceful, pleasant and relaxed time with my family and we could afford most things. Just like an ordinary family. We got presents and family time and I, w I would always complain. Now that I think about it, why did I do that? Why couldn't I have just enjoyed it the way it was? Just let it pan out the way it would. We were a happy, cheerful and joyous family. And then, boom, everything, everything, every single little thing changed. Everything changed so quickly. Mother was always sad and unhappy and I remember not liking it at all. Everything, apart from my brother's brother and sister, they stayed the same. Same personality, same features, always telling me to shush. If this didn't happen, I don't know where I would be. I always felt frightened, scared and afraid when father left. Every night I would sob and cry in my bed for hours and hours. And that would make me fall asleep. My unhappiness made me sleep. How could that be? Why? It was, it was like a cheetah came to our house at night and swept everything from us, as well as father. And I could never get over it. Never, ever get over it. From then on, he would never write to me, Bobby and Peter. One night, one single night, one full moon night. I remember thinking, I think my father has passed away. I don't know why. Mother never talked about him, so I just gave up hope. Hope that I didn't think would last. We had not much food, not much family time, not much coal. My father was an angel. He was like a shining star in my heart. Crash, everything changed in such a small space of time. Then one day I saw something, something I had never seen before, never in my entire life. I saw Bobby crying. She was crying. I thought she would be like her mother and I was right. The next day, something big was happening. Something I had never saw before. I saw something very peculiar, very peculiar, peculiar indeed in the corner of my eye. Wow, it was a fabulous, filthy figure. I thought I recognised it, but I wasn't sure. What was it? Yes, it was Father. He had returned. It was the best day of my life, and it still is. Before Father returned, I could sense something spectacular was going to happen and I am so glad this event occurred. Thank you for watching me.
looking back on it, I realise you never know how lucky you are to have something until you lose it. Me, Peter and Bobby were the talk of the town at the time. I didn't understand what was happening, but all I knew for sure was that I was scared. I was confused. I felt like I couldn't do anything right. Not with Mother, not with Perks, not with anyone. The day Father left, it felt like my whole life fell apart. He left without saying why, without even saying goodbye. But I've realised now that moving was one of the best things that could have ever happened to me. I felt more brave than I ever had. Being the youngest, I always felt like people wouldn't tell you what was going on or what was going to happen until, I suppose, it just did. I hated being told what to do. But the day we became the railway children is the day I remember the most from my childhood. Because when Bobby stood in front of that train, it felt like life itself slowed down with the screeching of the train wheels in the background. I couldn't bear the thought of life without her. She's the only thing holding my family together. But once we saved all these people inside the train, it felt as if I was a lion. Strong, courageous and admirable. I also remember Perk's birthday. He's like family to me. When he thought we were trying to say he was a charity case, it broke my heart. But all in all, I guess what I'm trying to say is family's important, so important, whether they're blood related to you or not. All of them are important. Can you imagine life without them? I certainly can't. I'll never forget my time as a kid. So different to now. Oh, the adventures we had. If I told all of them, it would take a lifetime. I know back then, I thought my life was so difficult. But now, looking back on it, I would do anything to go back in time and do it all over again. I loved it. All the friendly people in the countryside, the trains, the memories, but the best thing was my family. I hope my sisters think the same. The only thing that I would have changed is the amount of time we saw father. It's very difficult not seeing him every day like we used to. Imagine that, barely ever seeing your father. Would you like it? I guarantee that our adventures were the best ever. We always ran into the train station like a cheetah catching his prey. Even though we had some rough times, we will always and forever be the railway children. It's Peter, and I'm almost 70 years old. Although I'm almost 70, I still remember those few weeks of uh, Three Chimneys. It was a real shock to go from this small little house in the middle of the city to this random house in the countryside. When we first went there, I was scared, excited and tired all at the same time. But I loved the unpolluted air rushing through my hair. And I loved the fresh green grass and the bright blue sky. I don't get much outside contact now, because I'm now a mechanic. Probably the most memorable memory was when we stopped the train from derailing and killing multiple people. Back then, if we had iPhones, it would have been so much easier. We could have just called Perks. But no, we risked our lives for other lives. Now I think about it, having an iPhone would have just made life generally easier. We call, could have called Dad every day and kept in contact. But no, the good old days.